guys, my name is Shay, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing All American, Season 3, Episode 17, All American Homecoming. I'm really excited to dive into this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get it. The episode starts off with Jordan, Simone, Spencer, and Olivia arriving at Brinkston. They see a rapper named Corday performing on stage and everyone decides to turn up for the weekend. They all go to Simone on Amara's class and she is a journalism professor. Two students are having a debate about journalism objectivity. Amara says that if it doesn't cross your line in the sand, there is no shame in walking away. But if that line does cross, it's best to pursue it until you have it right and then bring it to life. After her class is over, Simone goes to greet her aunt and introduces her to the rest of the group. Simone senses that Amara is brewing up her next article, and Amara says that she's still putting the pieces together. Amara introduces them to Keisha, who is a student at Brinkston, and she will be showing them around campus. The girls are walking together, with Spencer and Jordan following slowly behind. They all talk and get to know each other, and we learn that Keisha is pre-med, and that she is the captain of the Brinkston dance team. I'm like, okay, girl, I see you. <laughs> Keisha asks Simone if she's thinking about applying, and Simone says that she's just there visiting family. Keisha questions them about the fine guys with them, and Simone says that Jordan is her husband, and Spencer is all Olivia's, and I know that's right. <laughs> Olivia says that her and Spencer are just friends, yet again. Keisha hears that loud and clear, and she immediately goes to wrap her arm around Spencer and asks if he's hungry, and Keisha did not waste any time. <laughs> Keisha wants to dance, and Olivia comes with her while Simone hangs back and records them. We see a guy come over to her and snatch her phone and says that he is not in the mood for pictures being taken of him. Simone dismisses him as she should and says that she doesn't know who he is and that she was recording her friend dancing. He does this half-assed apology and Simone totally checks him and puts him in his place. I love this. Jordan comes over to check on her and the guy says that it was just a misunderstanding. Damon and his friend are on the bleachers watching the Brinkston baseball team at practice. Damon asks his friend about playing baseball at the college and that they keep him on the bench most of the time. Damon tells him that his time will come and to not worry. Spencer and Jordan see Damon from afar and Spencer says that he recognizes him because he's one of the top recruits in the country. Damon tries to leave all incognito, or should I say incognito, <laughs> and the Brinkston team recognizes him. The girls are at the tennis court and Keisha informs them about a student named Thea who plays tennis. Thea's parents are major donors, and they make sure that she has nothing but the best, which is why she's attending the college. Thea tells them that they can leave if they are going to be disruptive. Simone apologizes to her and tries to give her a compliment, but Thea does not want to hear it. She sees Simone's tennis bracelet and asks if she wants to play around, and she's hesitant at first, but then she agrees. Damon is taking pictures with some of the members of the Brinkston team, and a guy sarcastically shades him and then asks if he wants to play. Damon is hesitant on playing as well, but then he agrees. It goes back and forth between Damon playing the game on the field and Simone playing tennis on the court. After the game, Simone asks Thea if she always warms up that intensely, and Thea tells her that she thought that she could hang. Shade. <laughs> Shade. After the game is over, the Brinkston coach comes to them and orders them to do laps around the field. The coach is played by none other than Corey Hardrick, Tia's husband. I love that Corey is in this spinoff because he's a really good actor, and plus he's from my city, Chicago, Chi-Town. <laughs> so I definitely got to show love and support. Damon comes over to introduce him, and the coach tells him that he doesn't have time for someone who coming here and wanting to show off. He mentions that Damon is the star pitcher of his high school team, and that he is sitting out to make sure that his arm is ready for the pros. The coach says that he doesn't understand why Damon still plays when it's clear he doesn't enjoy it. And off topic, these two right here, Peyton and Corey, are, they are one of the main reasons of why I'm really excited for the spinoff. Because again, like I said, they're really good actors and they're handsome. So, of course, I enjoy that. <laughs> Leonard Shaw comes over to them and introduces himself to Damon. Simone, Jordan, Spencer, and Olivia are all out with Amara having lunch. She gets a call from her mother and Simone says that while her father knows where she is, her mother doesn't. Amara tells her to really give Brinkston some consideration. Spencer asks Amara what's special about HBCUs. And Amara says that it's a connection to our history and our culture. She gets a phone call from Keisha saying that there is an emergency at the fashion show. Backstage, one of the lead dancers has a bad breakout on her face, <laughs> like bad, and they need to find someone to fill in for her. Amara tells them that Simone and Olivia will both do the fashion show. The fashion show starts and our girls Olivia and Simone are killing it <laughs> in their lingerie. Jordan and Spencer are literally in awe looking at their woman and it's so cute. It was funny because Damon sat up in his seat real quick. <laughs> like homeboy was drooling <laughs> he was definitely checking Simone out after the fashion show MC tells Olivia and Simone that they need to get out of their expensive dresses 
Simone goes to take off her heels, and Damon comes over to her, trying to help her keep balance. She tells him that she is good, and he tries to do another apology, but he's tongue-tied, and he seems sincere this time, so I'll give him that, but apologies are clearly not his thing. <laughs> He asks for a do-over, and they properly introduce themselves to each other. He asks Simone to show him around campus, which is funny because she doesn't even go there. <laughs> like, he's really trying to shoot his shot, but I ain't mad at it, but she's a married woman, so. <laughs> Jordan comes over, and he threatens Damon that if he keeps talking to his girl, they are going to have some problems. Damon says that he didn't mean to disrespect, and he tells Spencer that he recognizes him from the news about taking a knee that sparked a national chain effect of other teens doing the same. Damon's friend comes over to him and shows him the headlines that read that Damon is tr was trying out for the baseball team at Brinkston and that he is thinking about leaving the M M MLB. Damon tries to explain to his mother about the headlines and that he just wanted one weekend just to be normal. And every time, <laughs> every time Peyton comes on my screen, I get happy. I just enjoy looking at him so much and he's so handsome. <laughs> and I really miss him on Legacies, but I'm extremely happy for him and excited for him for this new opportunity and I just know that he's gonna shine in this spinoff like he did in this episode. Damon's mother tells him that he has to do interviews. Damon says that he won't do it and that he is the one who has to make all of these sacrifices and deal with the backlash along with the consequences. His mother says that everything that she does is for him and tells him to get dressed again. Spencer comes to Simone's aunt to drop off an envelope that was outside of her door and he leaves. She opens the envelope and she sees a picture of Shaw along with a white man and immediately gets on the phone to demand for some transcripts. Simone and Olivia are at a museum talking about some phenomenal black women, from Marianne Wright Edelman to Toni Morris. Olivia says that this place seems to be really good for her, and Simone says that being here makes her feel full. And it's good to see that. She gets a text from Keisha, and Olivia makes a face, and Simone tells her to stop. Olivia says that she's not surprised that Keisha is already with Spencer, and Simone tells her that if, that if she's not going to go after what she wants, she can't get mad when somebody else does. And I'm like, facts? That's true. <laughs> Leonard and Marcus are in Dr. Allen's office. They both leave, and Amara shows him the transcripts that the baseball players enrolled in anthropology that, the, that those aren't real classes. He realizes that the coach cheated in order for the team to win baseball games, which is so messed up. While Zeke believes while the anthropology classes are not real classes, they are open to all students, and that will look good to the NCAA. Amara questions that the cheating will just be swept under the rug, and she demands that the right thing be done and Leonard be held accountable. Damon is with his mother in the car, and she is going over questions for his interviews. She sees a video of her phone of breaking news of Leonard being investigated and suspended for academic fraud. She is worried about them losing their leverage, while Damon is more concerned about the team and everyone else's lives affected by the scandal. His mother cannot understand his feelings towards Bringston, and Damon is upset and decides to walk back to campus. Marcus goes to confront about Leonard and the scandal. Leonard says that his job was to get the players ready for the pros and that he won't apologize for his decision. Marcus says that clearly that's where he and Leonard differ. And I'm like, come on, Marcus. A real man, okay? <laughs> Spencer, Olivia, Jordan, and Simone arrive at a party. They all dance and are having a good time. Simone is outside and Damon comes to talk to her. He sees her tennis bracelet and says that she is just trying to find her mojo again, but that the competition is a little stiff. He tells her to just use that as motivation and to not let it shake you. She says that she heard about the scandal, and Damon says that it just doesn't affect him. Olivia, Jordan, and the friend are dancing inside, and Spencer rushes over to Olivia to ask her to dance before Keisha comes back. <laughs> Jordan learns from the friend that Keisha wasn't even really into Spencer like that at all, and that she was just trying to make her ex jealous. And that always works, doesn't it? <laughs> so Olivia danced, and they kiss, and it's super cute. Oh, I loved it. Simone comes back inside while Jordan just is disgusted at watching Spolivia make out. Simone says that Olivia is going after what she wants, and I know that's right. <laughs> Damon comes to the field and finds Marcus there. He says that he just wanted some time to say goodbye to the field before he has to leave because the school is getting rid of the coaching staff. He tells Damon that when he does make it to the pros, it's important to remember to be a man of integrity on and off the field. Marcus pretty much confesses without actually confessing to tipping off someone in the scandal because he wants the players to have a real chance to show people what they can do under an honest program. Simone is up early practicing tennis and Thea shows up and tells her that she underestimated her. She tries to give Simone some pointers, but Simone doesn't want to hear it. She gives her another tip and tells her that every time they step out on that court as black women, they are being judged and to always bring excellence. And I can tell that she's a bitch, but a bitch with a heart, so...
I'm here for it. <laughs> Simone is having a talk with her aunt and says that coming to Brinkston was amazing. Amara says that it's not too late and encourages her to apply, but Simone says that her mother would never let her come, here, come there. Amara tells Simone in order to be the best version of herself for Jordan and everyone else, she needs to choose herself first for once. Damon is sitting on the bleachers and Spencer comes to him and they have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Damon says that the MLB is more of his mother's dream than his own and that he doesn't want to let her down. And you can't live your life for anyone else but yourself. You only get one life, so it's best to live it as fully as possible. He mentions that she saved his life because she adopted him. He says that his birth parents are from Atlanta and that Brinkson is the only connection that he has to them. Spencer, of course, comes with his wisdom and tells him that whatever Damon decides to do to make sure that it's the right decision for him. Simone knocks on Elaine Lonnie's door, who is the head coach of tennis at Brinkston. Damon comes outside with Zeke and Zeke starts speaking at the press conference. Dr. Allen says that he hopes that integrity will be their legacy and gives Damon a chance to speak. Damon says that he won't be participating in the 2021 MLB draft and instead he will be committing to playing baseball at Brinkston with Marcus as their head coach. And Marcus's face when he heard him say that he was like, what? but okay <laughs> he says that they will bring rebuild baseball and bring championship back to it with honor and, and integrity damon's mother couldn't even be proud of her son in that moment because she had the complete shit face on full display and i'm like girl bye <laughs> jr and damon are at the museum and he says that this place feels like home he says that they can rebuild hank's legacy and make him proud Simone congratulates Damon on everything and tells him that she's happy he seems at peace. Every scene that we have gotten of these two in this episode, the chemistry between them has been truly amazing. It really has. And don't get me wrong, I love Jordan and Simone together, and they are really cute. And it's really sweet how Jordan changed for the better just by being with Simone. So I just love that. However, <laughs> I really like the chemistry and the vibe between Simone and Jordan. And after this one episode, I'm a little conflicted. I hate to say it, but I am. <laughs> but we shall see. She says that she has to leave and that her hubby, Jordan, is waiting for her. Of course, Damon is surprised to learn that she is married and he leaves it alone. Before she leaves, he asks her if she found her mojo. And she says that she did. He tells Simone to take care of herself and she leaves. Simone comes outside and Jordan tells Simone that she looks happy and she kisses him. The episode ends with Simone getting in the car and Jordan making a face showing that he is clearly worried about losing her. And I'm just like, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. To wrap up this video, I'm going to do three quick things. First, my quick thoughts on the episode. This was honestly one of the best episodes of the season. No cap. I really enjoyed the storyline along with being introduced to some, to some new characters. Some characters I liked, while some characters I didn't. <laughs> this backdoor pilot what has me super excited and ready for the spinoff. In this spinoff, it has so much potential, and I'm just really hoping that people will actually support it and watch the show when the time comes. Second, my thoughts on next week's promo. It shows Spencer finding out about Grace and Carter being a thing and him not being happy about it. Well, he's not the only one because Dylan isn't happy about it either. <laughs> it also shows Spencer confronting Carter, so this will be interesting and entertaining. Third, I'm going to do a quick rapid fire of the episode. So favorite scene, of course, Simone and Olivia killing that performance and looking damn good in that lingerie. Black girl magic, love to see it. <laughs> favorite quote, sometimes you have to take one for the team by Marcus. I love that. Favorite duo, Simone and her Aunt Amara. I just love the scenes with the two of them together. Like, it's just really nice to see Simone connect with her family because we don't see that at all with her mother nor with her father. Favorite look, Simone in that yellow dress after the performance was fire. I also really like the jewelry headpiece she had on that she was wearing with it. It complimented her look so beautifully and her skin, okay? WTF moment, Damon's mother not clapping after he gave that inspiring and honorable speech at the press conference. Uh, she was just too upset with not getting what she wanted that she couldn't have, couldn't have been proud of her son and been happy for him in that moment. So that just says a lot about her character. And honestly, Simone and Damon's mother, they are literally one and the same. <laughs> they really are. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of All-American. I review other shows like Riverdale, Legacies, Good Trouble, and some other stuff. And if those interest you, please check out those videos on my channel and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. See you guys next week.